a dear state. I wanted to hear what you had to say, but there was too much talking over each other. Yeah. My mom would cook and sing and make up songs. So oh, okay, so music and food. Yeah, oh, there you go. Right there. So now my my daughters who are seven years old, they're um, they're singing and they want to be involved. They want to cook. Like, no, 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 I'll make my own food. Right. <laughs> I know where everything is. When I first moved to Tucson in '93 and I was living in Barrio Viejo and I was cooking, I was living by myself. I like to put on really old music. Uh -huh. I put on some old Portuguese fado music, Amalia uh -huh. Rodriguez. Or I'd, I'd go to the local thrift stores like Value Village and buy vinyl. And I would just find the, the weirdest records I could, just you know, something that no one would buy. Right. Al Cayola and his guitars, you know, the soundtrack. So that's what I would, you know, cook to. For each of you guys, how old were you when you realized that you had talent and really started taking music? seriously and not something oh I gotta take piano lessons or whatever. <laughs> That's a good question. You wanna go first? I started playing <clears throat> keyboards at five. And uh, I discovered it because my brother used to play it and I used to watch him play. So then I just imitated what he did and that's how I started learning melodies and and um I never took lessons, like formal lessons, but then I started playing in the in the school band. And then from that point on, I just kept learning different instruments and learning songs by ear. Right. And it was a lot of fun, like around eighth grade, uh, we'd be trying to learn cover songs by some of our favorite groups. And there was always one chord in each song that we couldn't figure out by ear. So then we would ask a friend, hey, do you know this chord? What is that chord in this part of the song? I don't know, but there's this kid that knows it. And <laughs> so then we'll we'd, find him. <laughs> we'd find out. And Big fans of dark songs. You know, this is writer okay. So this night. is. I, I was wondering what you what you, you, what you, you have a lot of stuff that you require backstage yeah. or just dark chocolate. What do you what do you, no. what do you what, what's on your what's on, is that, what's on your writer? Well, over in Europe, we just kind of let everyone kind of bring whatever local foods there are. Uh, mm -hmm. But we on the on the tour bus in Europe, we we bring a, our own panini maker. Oh really? And so we make uh, sandwiches uh, at the end of the night. So we can, we're cooking, and there's like smoke and steam and the whole buzz. It's kind of crazy. That's awesome. Lots of music. How fun! And uh, but on the backstage writer, yeah, just you know, local stuff, dark chocolate band. For me, what I would, you know, I, I I always think of it in this way: that if you go someplace and you somehow were magically transported somewhere, and you didn't know where you were, and somebody gave you these dishes. You would eat this food, and you would say, I'm in Tucson. Yeah. This is home. This is the flavors of my home. Tucson, how you doing?